Morning, everyone. This is a big week for the American people. It's a big week for President Biden. It's a big week for House and Senate Democrats. We're not running away from that. We're leaning into it. We embrace it. We understand that uh, we've been given the opportunity to govern for the people to build back better. That's exactly what we are committed to doing. Seems to me that there are five things that are in front of us that we've got to deal with in a variety of different ways over the next week or so. We have to move the bipartisan infrastructure agreement so we can fix our crumbling bridges, roads, tunnels, airports, our mass transportation system, make sure that we invest in high-speed internet for every single American all across the country. We, of course, have to advance the ball on the Build Back Better Act so we can create millions of good-paying jobs, cut taxes for working families and middle-class families, and lower costs for everyday Americans, particularly in the areas of home care, health care, child care, and housing. That's what the Build Back Better Act is all about, in addition to dealing with the climate crisis with the fierce urgency of now. Third, we have to keep the government open. And we're committed to advancing the ball in that regard. Every single Republican in the House and in the Senate voted to shut the government down. This is the height of irresponsibility. Something is wrong with these people. They're in Washington, and apparently they're not here to govern. Fourth, of course, we have to make sure that we protect the full faith and credit of the United States of America, avoid a default on our debt. It's important for the American people to understand that the debt ceiling is not a forward-looking vehicle. Everything that we will get done on behalf of the American people in connection with the Bipartisan Infrastructure Agreement and the Build Back Better Act is paid for. It will not add a dime of debt for the American people. Not a dime. The debt ceiling is a backward-looking vehicle. What we're working on right now is making sure we pay the credit card bill that Donald Trump ran up, in part, on his own with reckless Republicans in connection with the GOP tax scam where 83 percent of the benefits went to the wealthiest one percent. Why? To subsidize the lifestyles of the rich and shameless. That's part of what's going on right now in terms of the debt. And then part of it is the necessary intervention that we did in a bipartisan way with respect to COVID-19 relief. Ninety-seven percent of the debt and the ceiling that we have to raise or deal with in some other way relates to Donald Trump's bills. Only 3% relate to anything having to do with Joe Biden's presidency. I think the American people deserve some transparency as it relates to what actually is going on with the debt ceiling. And then lastly, of course, we have the congressional baseball game. <laughs> Without Cedric Richmond. But it's also a great congressional tradition. And hopefully the spirit of bipartisanship that usually exists and we'll see on the field tomorrow, it's great to have it in the context of a congressional baseball game. And we do it for charity. And it helps underprivileged, at-risk young people. It's a worthy thing to do. But hopefully that same spirit of bipartisanship that we'll see on the field tomorrow will actually see on the floor of the House and the Senate on behalf of the American people. Questions? So on the debt limit, what would the House expand and if you sign a good agreement? Well, I think we had a discussion, as the speaker may have indicated, uh, that was pretty extensive about a few different options that are in front of us in terms of the debt limit. We are not going to uh, default on the full faith and credit of the United States of America. That's an ironclad guarantee. Now, 
what's in front of us right now is the government funding running out by September 30th. We've got a little more room as it relates to the debt ceiling. A few more weeks. Now, that's not an excuse for my friends or colleagues on the other side of the aisle to continue to play with fire, uh, but we clearly have to deal with the continuing resolution to fund the government in the next few days. What we ultimately wind up doing with the debt ceiling, we have the votes to deal with it here in the House. The challenge, as is often the case, is what is going to happen in the Senate. And I know that's something that Leader Schumer is working on as we speak. Well, well, Democrats are not a cult, we're a coalition. So the reality is, and we embrace that fact, we don't like bend the knee to one out of control former president who continues to lie about COVID and the election. We're not a cult. We are a coalition. I think everybody recognizes that, we embrace that. There's progressives, there's new Dems, there's blue dogs, there's people on the left and the center, a few conservative Democrats. That's the Democratic coalition. And we embrace the fact that we are the most authentic representatives, particularly in the House, the institution designed to be the closest to the people, the most authentic representatives of the American people. And we take that seriously. The Senate has its own dynamics. And it's obvious that one of the things that slowing down what's in front of us in terms of the parallel tracks of these two bills, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Agreement, we have to get over the finish line. The Build Back Better Act, we have to get over the finish line. The challenge that we're confronting is that a handful of senators, we are still waiting to get an understanding of what is the number that they are comfortable with in terms of advancing the priorities of President Biden and congressional Democrats related to all of these important areas of investment, not just in terms of physical infrastructure, but in terms of investing in the middle class, those who aspire to be part of it, working families, low-income Americans, people who have been left behind by the presidency in the previous administration. And can you, uh, could you articulate any reasoning why the progressives would say, why should we trust Manchin and Sinema, which seems to be, you know, Manchin said yesterday, we'll pass it by next election day well I think we have to continue to proceed as aggressively as possible in getting both of the two bills that are in front of us done and what has been publicly articulated by our leadership is that we need an ironclad commitment now, that ultimately is going to have to be worked out primarily by the Senate Democratic leadership, and then we're going to have to come together to make sure that we're comfortable with where things are at in terms of these two bills being able to get over the finish line. What is the ironclad commitment that you, need, that you think they need? Well, that's a continuing discussion that I think is going to have to happen within the caucus. And the most important thing is that substantively, everybody is in agreement with perhaps the exception of one or two people, but the votes are there to pass both the bipartisan infrastructure agreement and all of the priorities that are in that bill and the Build Back Better Act. So the caucus is there on substance. What we've got to work out, as is often the case, are the peculiarities of the Senate. On the debt Start there. <laughs> on the debt limit, you mentioned that there are a couple different options. I'm used to, I'm used to looking left, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> oh, okay. You mentioned there are a couple different options that you're looking at in regards to the debt limit, but I'm wondering what other option is there at this point beyond reconciliation, given that we now know from the vote last night that there aren't going to be any Republican senators who will join Democrats on raising the ceiling? Well, 
you know, Senator Schumer has preserved the right to bring the legislation up again. In what form he does that is unclear. The bill that was before the Senate yesterday related to a variety of different things. It also included emergency relief for people who have been devastated by extreme weather events all across the country, and you've got some senators whose constituents were hurt by these extreme weather events, including Hurricane Ida, voting against the relief. This is extraordinary stuff. Leader Schumer procedurally voted against the bill to preserve the right to recall it. And so I don't want to get out ahead of whatever discussions he's having in the Senate with both his caucus as well as Senate Republicans who may be willing to proceed. You know, you can lift the debt limit. You can suspend the debt limit. We did that multiple times under the Trump administration, three times, I believe, to suspend the debt limit. There are different dates. So there are a variety of different options that I believe are still under consideration. Speaker Pelosi talked about funding for the war in Afghanistan and she talked about legislative races and upgrades of highway funding. Do you think that it is likely that that bill will be uh, passed by by Thursday and that other things won't happen? Appears to me that we're on track, you know, to move the bipartisan infrastructure agreement and it's a very important point that uh, we have an expiration date that is in front of us in terms of the necessary investments that need to be made uh, in our highways, our bridges, our roads, our tunnels, and, and funding the Department of Transportation. Yeah. Um, when you said earlier the votes that are there for both bills, do you mean the votes are there now or the votes that are being debated? Because clearly the two are saying that the votes aren't there in this moment and there needs to be some more work done to get to there. And I've heard Mr. Lynch was talking about whether you need to remodel uh, another way to get some votes in there. Yeah, on substance, the votes are there in the context of what we're trying to get accomplished for the American people. Now, we're figuring out the pathway uh, to get both of these very important bills over the finish line. That's the promise that we made to the American people. That's the commitment that we still have. Uh, and again, because of the dynamics in the Senate with a handful of senators, the hope is that we'll receive a number from them sooner rather than later so we can figure out uh, how to execute on the many priorities that are in the Build Back Better Act. Don't some House members share those concerns about substance and reconciliation? I don't believe I've heard a single um, House member with respect to the overall objectives, creating millions of good paying jobs, lowering taxes, you know, for working families and middle class families, including by extending the child tax credit, which is the centerpiece of that effort, and of course lowering costs uh, for everyday Americans, particularly focused on Medicare, Medicare, Medi you know, Medicaid, uh, the Affordable Care Act, uh, as well as um, prescription drug prices. Those are sort of the big priorities that are within the Build Back Better Act, and this complete unity uh, as it relates to those priorities. Anyone else who hasn't gone? Okay, I'm, I promise I come back over here. Yeah. A baseball question. Yes. A lot of members on the Republican team, though, still don't believe that President Biden won the election. Is it going to be difficult to have this bipartisan moment and win when you have a team like Marjorie Taylor Greene representing five who are on the opposing team? So many things I could say about Marjorie Taylor Greene playing well, in this game, uh, but, <laughs> but. You know, I, I think that we're going to keep the focus on the reason why the game takes place, which is, you know, to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for at-risk young people in the Washington, D.C. area, along with being able to, um, you know, participate in America's pastime. And hopefully people will leave the politics, you know, under the Capitol Dome, not bring them onto the baseball field, which has traditionally been the case. And I think we're all hopeful that that will remain the case in terms of the game tomorrow. Are you doubtful? Hopeful, we're hopeful that it will remain the case tomorrow. Um, if, if Thursday comes around and the Senate doesn't have an agreement on principle or number, do you expect the bipartisan infrastructure bill to pass by then? Well, let's just take it day by day. Uh, we've got a few days between now and then 
we remain hopeful that the many different conversations that have been taking place, particularly with the senator from West Virginia and the senator from Arizona, will yield some greater clarity sooner rather than later into what is possible in the Senate so we'll know what's possible in the House. Thank you, everyone.